Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. It's been eons, but it is finally here. The final episode of Subnautica No Water Playthrough. In this one, we will be wrapping up the entire game, and let me tell you, boy, it, it, it took a while. It took a long time. I mean, but hey, you will see all of that. But guys, before we begin, this video is sponsored by absolutely no one. Wow, imagine sponsoring a bacon video, wouldn't that be crazy? So, without any further ado, why don't we jump right into where we left off last time, falling into the lava zone. And boom, there goes that. Oh boy, it's looking kind of surprisingly open out here. Alright, so the first order of business was to reach the lava castle, and I continued to move around with my prawn suit, if for nothing else, than just because it would help me with fall damage. Now, the reason I was going to go to the lava castle was to go into the facility there to get the blue tablet which I would need in the primary containment facility. Traversing the lava zone in the prawn suit was not actually challenging, but instead of going to the lava castle in this vehicle, I decided to instead leave it off at the drop off to the active lava zone and go for the rest of the way on foot, because I figured it would be a little faster, especially with the combo of the propulsion cannon and an air bladder. I'm not gonna lie, walking through the lava zone was pretty freaking cool, and luckily none of the heat was actually detecting, which is pretty nice so far, I gotta say. No water, no heat in the water, I guess. My smooth air bladder gliding was there to always save me, and luckily there are these ridges on the side of the lava castle, which make traversing it actually pretty easy. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little uneasy when I heard the sea dragon and I saw it shooting off fireballs in the distance, but, um, well, they luckily never caused any issues, so I just assumed they probably fell under the map. I mean, they do that plenty already anyways, without the mods. I found the entrance, walked through the interior of the lava castle. Alright, boys, here's the moment of truth. Will I take damage from the lava without water? Oh, oh well, actually, I won't. How about that? So, bringing the prawn suit is just making things a bit more difficult, I reckon, but... Oh well. Now I was tasked with the pretty challenging goal of actually flying into the entrance of the suspended facility without, you know, falling down into the abyss. And while I thought this would inevitably take like 15 tries, I'd actually gotten so good at flying with the air bladder that I managed to nail it on the first go, which uh, was a pleasant surprise. Something went well for once in this challenge. One tablet goes here. And there goes my key to the primary containment facility. Awesome. Now the challenge of leaving the facility is not actually as easy as it sounds, because again, it can be pretty confusing and there are really no ledges to drop onto or anything, so I had to get a little creative. I managed to fly my way onto the roof and from there I was actually able to navigate down, utilizing the fact that Riley can take a surprising amount of drop damage to eventually make my way out of the castle. Now here I did actually encounter another problem, which is that inside some structures or some areas, you're not actually able to drop your items. Yeah, you will just not have the option to drop them in the menu. But what does work here is to simply walk back out into the large cavern where you can drop items and then bring them back using the propulsion cannon. A few moments of traversing these very handy ledges on the lava castle later. I actually came up to a reaper skeleton, that was kinda cool. It seems much bigger when you're just walking around it. But alas, I was at the prawn suit and ready to drop down in the lava zone. So my adventure carried on and I quickly noticed that the lava does actually do quite a lot of damage to the prawn suit. So my advice here if you're trying this challenge yourself is to just minimize your exposure and jump over these small islands of rock and then just repair the prawn suit in between everything. Hop, 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 and there I was finally in the primary containment facility without any water. One blue key later and I was finally able to walk up the ramp of success and arrive at the antechamber or whatever you call this room. Alright, so now I had limited resources and it was important to act smart. I knew I would need to craft one more blue tablet so I gathered a bunch of resources and used one of my iron cubes to open a teleporter which would take me back up to the surface. I grabbed everything from the bronze suit, traveled all the way back through the teleporter and took one long flight back home. Oh, I also encountered a life pod on the way, but it's not like I really needed anything from it, so it was just a cool addition. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board, this is your pilot Bacon speaking. Prepare for a flight from the crag field into the safe shallows. The expected flight duration is about 5 minutes, local weather is warm, slight northeastern wind, and a high chance of fish falling from the sky. Hope you enjoy flying with air bladder. 
Back at the base, I used the tools I had gathered to craft me a blue tablet. I also decided to venture towards the dunes to gather me some ion cubes since I knew I would need them later in constructing the rocket. Found the sanctuary, stole all of their ion cubes, accidentally ended up landing on top of this mushroom, and after restocking back at my base, it was time to travel back down into the primary containment facility. Yoink, there goes the key, and alright, here we are with the Sea Emperor. Uh, okay, wait, H how am I gonna get down there? Okay, I, I guess I just jump. Oh boy, my knees are gonna suffer. Ah, oh, there we go. All good. Oh, look at her go. <laughs> she doesn't need no water to climb up here. Just the same way I didn't need no water to get down here. Ah, uh, okay, and uh, in retrospect, maybe I should have brought the prawn suit to um, be able to take this drop. Okay, one more quick reload later, don't mind that at all. All nice and powered up, there we go. And now all we need are the hatching enzymes and we will be able to get cured. Awesome. So I walked, she huffed and puffed, I teleported and there I was again at the alien gun. Now it was time to fly around the entire map and start collecting ingredients for the hatching enzymes. I'm gonna skip you on through most of it because it's not particularly interesting. But can I just say how annoying it is that a lot of these plants take up four spaces as opposed to just one in your inventory? Like seriously, why? Chop, 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 chop. At one point I actually found myself at a pretty big pickle because I needed to get down into the Sea Emperor's tank. And of course I no longer had the prawn suit. So instead I had to do a very, very controlled float down using the air bladder and I just think it looks kind of funny. One more trip to the surface and there go the hatching enzymes. How about that? I'm not gonna lie, the constant traveling did get a little annoying even with the teleporter because I would just always have to fly there and back, but... Well, the worst is yet to come, so I probably shouldn't be complaining. Boom, there go the enzymes. <laughs> look at them. Oh, look at these adorable little creatures go. Uh, okay, it does does not look like they're really able to swim very well without the water, but uh, I mean, I mean that's to be expected, I suppose. Like, I definitely don't pay attention to how they're kind of plummeting to the ground from high up after swimming up. That's you know what? That's not important. Look, they reunited with their mom. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, so they wouldn't actually ever complete the animation with the Sea Emperor, so I just kind of left, hoping that they would teleport after me. Which they did, and then they plummeted to their death, but it doesn't really matter because here is Enzyme 42, yay. Look, a brown ball of goo. Happiness. Okay, with Riley all cured and definitely nothing wrong happening with the Emperors, it was time to go disable the gun. One press of a button and a little stabby later, and there it was. No more quarantine. Awesome. So all that is left now is to build the Neptune escape rocket and we'll be able to leave. How hard can that be? Okay, so I'm gonna skip you through the majority of the grind coming after this point because to build a Neptune rocket, well, you need a boatload of materials and even that's an understatement. What I will note, however, was that I decided to be smart for once and actually gather up all of my materials before putting down the mobile vehicle bay or before building anything since I figured it would probably just fall through the map if I left and thus I would want to have everything before I started so that I could just build it all up and leave the planet. Can't really say that much exciting stuff happened during this but I will give you the advice to very carefully plan out your trips because going anywhere in this mode is just it's just kind of difficult, so you don't really want to be visiting places more than once if you can avoid it. But only a few hours later the time had finally come. I believed, at the time, I had all of the necessary ingredients and so, one mobile vehicle bay later, it was time to build a Cyclops. Oh. Are you kidding? I never got the freaking parts for the Cy- Dang it! Stupid big submarine. Hi there, Sea Treader, you look very cool. Beep, bop, boop, there we go. I know last time people again said that the music I chose for the traveling parts wasn't very relaxing, so for the last time, why don't you enjoy this smooth flight over the entire map from the Sea Treader's path to my base with some relaxing music in the background. Cyclops time! Surprisingly, it can just build without any problems even though there's no water. Go figure, something's going well for once. Uh, okay, how do I get in? Okay, this could be a bit of an issue. Ah, there we go, not a problem at all. Okay, alright, just gotta craft this little... Are you freaking serious? I totally forgot that you even need to find this. Be gone, wreck. 
give me the secrets that are hidden within you. Okay, with that nightmare out of the way, the time had finally, finally come to build everything and get the heck off of this planet. Now, rather than building right onto the Cyclops, I decided to move my thingy a little bit, uh, which in retrospect proved to be a very good idea, but would you look at that? I mean, that is surprisingly functional. Uh, it's building, at least. I'm not sure how functional it will be once it's finished building, but so far, so good. There's something incredibly cursed about this. Oh, okay, okay that's... Uh, um... I really don't know how to feel about this, honestly. I feel like the devs might genuinely be offended by this. Okay, how do I even get on top? Tip tap toe, and there we go. I, I just have to take another look at this thing. This might be among the most cursed things I've done with Subnautica, and I've done a lot over the years. All right, uh, well, I guess there's nothing left to do but take her for a spin, right? Okay, enable all the systems, why not? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's go for it, I guess. Oh, it turned into day out of nowhere. Okay, that's cool. Uh, here Launching. it comes. Takeoff time. Look at look at these fake news. You see that we're actually not moving at all. <laughs> you can still see the kelp forest in the bottom right. That's a little cursed. Ouch. Okay, there goes that. <laughs> you can still see that we're underground. That's kind of funny. I guess it breaks the illusion a little bit, but we don't need to worry about that. Oh, isn't that Gravity beautiful, guys? I don't know where all that water came from because I swear I removed it, but hey, you know what? I guess it had to come back in the end. And with that, guys, we have successfully completed Subnautica without any water. Well, except for that one little part. Which successfully takes us to the end of this challenge, and I want to thank you so much for watching and supporting these videos all the way through. Honestly, I haven't had this much fun recording regular Subnautica Let's Plays in a very long time, and so I would definitely be down to try more crazy things like this in the future. For now though, I really hope all of you enjoyed, and if you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing, all those would be very much appreciated. And if you want further updates on what videos are going to come next, or you just want to talk directly to me, consider following me on Twitter or joining my Discord, both links are in the description. Now with that, I'm gonna wish you all a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.